another very cool feature on Drop7 is Shape the Form. Shape the Form is basically a particle skinner. Before to do cables or cloth or some stuff like deforming, what we was using it is like exporting particles from TP into PRT, importing it in PFLOW and using, a, using particle skinner in Max to drive a mesh based on these particles and you can tear the mesh and everything but it was like breaking all the procedural stuff in TP so now with shape the form we can keep everything in TP it's awesome and I am using that a lot in production for creating splines nets, cloth and all this stuff and I use it sometimes when the mesh is very shitty like this one, I download from a free asset online and you can see it's very bad uh, It's no one th did that thinking about use this in uh, effects but sometimes you get assets like that and it's a system that works very well for far away cables and I use it sometimes you can download that, I will have it for a very free um, amount of money to get something back uh, but basically it's pretty cool you can put anything that you need into cables the mesh and it's all you need to do you put your objects in cables and your colliders in colliders if there is something on the first frame that is close to collider will get attached so here you can see this as is attached and you can see that this is getting broken that's all happening on shape the form basically what i am driving is particles that you can see it here Maybe it's difficult for you to see, but I have particles on each vertex. And these particles are driving my mesh with shape the form. Simply you give a target that it's my cables, all objects that are here. And I want these to be moved by my particles that are on the viscoelastic group. And I drive this by nearest link. Needless link is each, each, mm, each vertex of the mesh checks a distance around based on this detect radius. If you have it too low, you will see that there is some artifacts. So let's put it at 3. You see that there is some objects that are breaking. Let's turn out auto break. You will see it better. With auto break, you will see some points that this means that the this vertex didn't detect any particle because this detect radius was too small so then you need to increase this detect radius go one frame back and now you will see that everything is on place uh, you don't need anything from here on the nearest link but you see this, these points are getting rock so you have auto break auto break anything that is below this threshold will break it's a distance threshold, so these particles will break. And yeah, you can keep all this. You can play with it. Uh, not TP. Let's move this box. So now you will see that uh, this rope is getting updated. And it's pretty cool for far away shots. It works very well, and you don't need to have a nice mesh. If you go closer, since the mesh, again, this mesh was very bad. If you have a good mesh and you can create a particle per vertex, you will not have all these problems. But sometimes I need to do shots like this and with motion blur and everything, it works perfectly. If it works, use it. And if it's easy and fast, mm, I don't care about small problems like this when it's things that maybe you have a boat far away and it, this is what you will see this works amazingly well and yeah that's all um, you can even any particle that gets detached you can send it to another group and then it's a rigid body and you can do put it on a bullet or whatever and make it bounce and you have different types i will not cover all the other types because on the example files edwin add some of them but basically needless link it's uh, what we was doing that each vertex gets a p attached to a particle the other ones um, it's pretty cool to create the formations based on velocity uh, over time each vertex check if there is a particle with a certain velocity and will move with this velocity 
And you can do examples like particles deforming stuff. You can do it only based on an impact threshold and things like that. So if you have, I don't know, water falling down, a specific particle falling down, it will create over time a deformation. Check the examples. But for what I will use more of that is with the nearest link. Because with this you can create ropes, you can create metal steering. Uh, it's pretty cool. And target and operand, it's cycling over all the objects, but as well you have inputs. So you can instead have particle input and operand particle, and you can have reference particles. So only some particles that are referenced to the other will work. Um, you can do a lot of stuff with that, and very excited to have it finally in TP, a way to create uh, particle skinning inside TP.